Hey, what's up guys? So in today's Wars in 2 video, I decided to do a top five what up video because a lot of you guys really liked it when I did it on the big map. And of course, judging off the title alone, this is gonna be a top five what up video for the Ashika Island map that just came out with the season two update. Shockingly enough, a lot of the best guns to use on the Ashika Island were also the best guns to use on the big map as well. And when I say that, I'm mainly talking about the RPK and Fennec because yes, even though those did technically get nerfed with the season two update, I still feel like they're a really good option to use. This list is gonna consist of five different primary weapons and four different secondary weapons paired with those primary weapons. To be completely honest, with any long range gun on this list, you can pair it with any short range gun on this list and do absolutely fine. Just because one short range and one long range gun are together doesn't mean they have to stay together to be the best water. You can mix and match all of the guns on this list. And just to get this out of the way now, these are the perks that I use. I use Overkill, Scavenger, Fast Hands, and Ghost on every single water that I use on the new Ashika Island. I kind of want to do this top five water video similarly to how I did it on the big map. So I'm going to start off with number five and work my way all the way up to number one. And for the fifth best water that I think you can use on Ashika Island is the TAC 56 paired with the Vasna. SMG. Now I have quite a few videos of the TAC-56 on this channel, so if you guys do regularly watch my channel, you guys know how much I do like the TAC-56. And in a big map like Almazara, it wasn't really all that good because the TAC-56 faces the same issue a lot of the other ARs in this game do, and that is a lack of damage range. But of course, with the Shiga Island being a lot smaller than the bigger map, the damage range isn't really that big of a deal, and since they also nerfed the RPK just a tiny bit, the TAC-56 is just a little bit better by comparison if you think about it that way. Of course, this is the TAC-56 setup that I would use if I was going to run the TAC-56. I'll be showing you all the tuning on screen right now for all the attachments in case you guys want to write it down yourselves and as most of you guys probably already know the attack 56 is an incredibly easy to use ar and it has a very easy to control recoil pattern as well and i feel like if you're just like a semi-decent player at call of duty you don't necessarily have to be that good to actually use this weapon what's interesting about the vaznev is i feel like it was always a good smg but for some reason a lot of people didn't really run the vaznev on their loadout but of course with the fennec being nerfed alongside of the rpk a lot of people have been trying different loadouts themselves and a lot of people have been telling me that the vaznev is really good now of course while recording this video i did end up using the Vaznev on Ashika Island and I was actually blown away with how good this weapon actually was. And I feel like the only real thing that's holding back the Vaznev in Warzone and Ashika Island is the fact that it only has a 45 round magazine and it burns through ammo incredibly quickly. Nonetheless though, if you do pair these two weapons together on the same water, you'll have a very good time on Ashika Island and both guns are incredibly easy to use with very good time to kills. And with that being said, that brings me to the fourth loadout that I think would be the best to run on Ashika Island. Now this loadout shares the same SMG that I put in the first one, which is the Vaznev obviously, so I'm not really going to go over that in this part. But the primary that I actually decided to put as number four for the best for Ashika is actually the SO14. Now, I made a video about this thing on Almazara about a week ago, and I was actually blown away, and I was telling people how it was the DMR 2.0. They'll easily down an enemy within three or four shots, so long as you're accurate, and its fire rate is incredibly fast as well. So I guess if you're going to want to run the SO14, as long as you have a pretty fast trigger finger and are able to maintain accuracy while using a single fire weapon, you can definitely make this thing shred. And I don't want to scare anybody, but I feel like once enough content creators and other YouTubers actually start talking about this weapon, and we are most likely going to see a DMR 2.0 meta in the coming future. As a reminder, if you guys do choose to use the SO14, I would highly recommend using it on single fire mode and not fully automatic. Because if you use it on fully automatic, it actually lowers the damage per shot, making the time to kill just a little bit longer. And honestly, if you have a fast trigger finger, you can make this thing feel like it's fully automatic. It's a really fun gun to use, and I would definitely use it before it gets nerfed inevitably. Coming up on number three on the list, we actually have a new secondary for this water, but it is the ISO Hemlock paired with the brand new broadside shotgun. Now, I know, I know a lot of people get kind of upset when the DLC weapons they released with the new seasons are a little bit too good or a little bit too broken but honestly when they release brand new dlc guns and we have to wait two months for the next update to get even more guns and those dlc guns aren't that good it's not really that great of a seasonal update in my opinion so of course the iso hemlock is an ar that a lot of people are calling the modern warfare 2's equivalent of the Hilo. it is a slow firing ar with a very easy to control recoil pattern and i think a lot of people as long as they unlock it and level it up can easily control it with the right attachments i will say it does share the similar issue as a lot of other ars in the game the damage range on this weapon is not all that great but just like the tac 56 i mentioned earlier in this video it doesn't really matter on a map like ashika island because a lot of your gunfights are going to be more closer range anyways than compared to the big map another problem with this weapon is the fact that the biggest magazine is only 45 rounds but as long as you hit your shots you can definitely make it work and honestly i'll probably end up trying to do like an smg build on this weapon in the near future because when i find the ground build version that has no attachments at all i feel like even within like close range encounters right at the start of the match that no attachment ground new version is actually kind of nasty so expect an smg build for this soon and the secondary on this loadout is the KV broadside shotgun. I don't know how many of you guys watched my video on this weapon when it originally came out, but this thing is absolutely busted. Now, I don't want to sound like too crazy or anything here, but to be completely honest, this might actually be the most broken shotgun that we have ever seen in Warzone history. And I'm not just talking about Warzone 2 either. Yes, the shotgun is semi-automatic, meaning you have to tap fire the trigger to fire this thing. It won't fire just by holding the trigger down. But even though it's tap fire, as long as you're shooting it fast enough, it has a similar fire rate to the Jack 12 from Warzone 1. You could easily two-shot an 
enemy that's fully plated on a Sheikah Island with a shotgun. Of course, that is as long as you're actually close enough to get the two shot kill. But even then, if you're a little bit outside of the range for two shot, it's like a four to five shot kill. And with the incredibly fast fire rate, it is so easy to use. Out of all the weapons on this list, this is probably by far the most broken one as long as it's close range, obviously. And I would highly recommend leveling up the shotgun and, and using it before they actually nerf it because it's tons of fun to use. And it is literally the only shotgun meta we've had in this game so far. My next one at number two, meaning I think it's the second best gun you can use on a Sheikah right now. That is the Sokken LMG paired with the Lockman sub. Now the Sokken LMG is another one of those guns, like I've mentioned before, where it was actually pretty good before the season two update, but a lot of people are now starting to realize it since the RPK was nerfed. It's very similar to the RPK in every single way. The only real difference is that it takes a little bit longer of time to actually reload the weapon. And it's just overall, just like a slightly more sluggish weapon to use. Still though, even with those cons, if you build it right and you have pretty decent accuracy, you can make this thing laser all the way up to like 200 meters or so pretty accurately because with it being an lmg it obviously doesn't face the same issues a lot of the ars in this game have where it's just kind of too hard to control at certain distances basically what i'm trying to say is, is that this thing is an absolute laser beam and i would highly recommend trying it out and of course paired with the socket on this photo is the lackman sub i.e the mp5 this game's mp5 actually took a while to grow on me originally i didn't really like it that much because i didn't really have a good build for it and of course with the fennec existing there wasn't really a reason to actually run this mp5 but with the season 2 update the fennec did see a nerf of course so there was a lot of other smgs that just seemed kind of more viable by default and the mp5 was one of the first ones that i decided to try now i do have a few videos about this weapon from the past and i've always liked the mp5 in this game and i thought the time to kill was really good i just never saw like a real reason to run the mp5 because the recoil pattern was just a little bit harder to control than the fennec so what was the point of actually running it over the fennec and out of all the close range weapons that i've mentioned on this list the mp5 is probably one of the harder ones to get used to obviously the kv broadsides a shotgun so as long as you have movement you can make it work but for all the smgs in the game i feel like even though the mp5 has a very very good time to kill and it's slightly above the Vaznev, I believe, you will struggle just a little bit more controlling this MP5 no matter how you build it than you would with like the Vaznev, Fennec, or maybe even like the um, E90. All in all though, it's still a very well-rounded SMG and I would definitely recommend using it, especially after the season two update. And for loadout number one on this list, this may come to a shocker to you, but in my opinion and a lot of other people's opinions, the best loadout that you can run while playing a Sheikah Island is actually still the RPK and the Fennec. Now, like I mentioned a few times throughout this video, the RPK and Fennec did of course receive a nerf with the season two update, but to be completely completely honest guys I haven't actually found a reason to use any other long range weapon over the RPK after trying multiple different kinds of weapons throughout the start of season two there's just really nothing that compares to the RPK and even after it got buffed I just feel like they could have probably buffed it just a smidge more because I don't know about you guys but even though that this was technically nerfed I still see everybody in my lobbies use it and when I use it I still do very well with it and feel like I do better with it than other guns hopefully they don't take too long to re-nerf the RPK even more and I really hope that we don't have to wait another two or three months to actually get an update for weapon tuning and and of course for my secondary and final weapon on this list i am showcasing the fennec now the fennec is a little bit different than the rpk on this list because obviously in season one this was the best smg to run but i feel like now that it's season two there might be a few better secondaries to run in this game so the fennec is still a very easy to use gun and a very good gun with one of the best time to kills but in my honest opinion i would rather actually use the vaznav the mp5 and the kv broadside shotgun that i mentioned on this list earlier over the fennec maybe it's just because i just used the fennec for the last three months and I'm just really bored of it, but I feel like I have better results with the Vaznev MP5 and the broadside shotgun than I do with the Fennec on a Sheikah. And the only reason that it is in number one spot is because it was paired with the RPK so heavily in season one. So I guess what I'm trying to say is, is that if you want to pair the RPK with the Vaznev MP5 or even the KV broadside shotgun, those are probably going to be your best loadouts that you can use at the moment in Warzone 2 and especially on Sheikah Island. And that wraps up this top five loadout video. I hope you guys did enjoy. This is the second time I've ever done a video like this. I tried a little bit different editing style. Let me know how you guys thought about the video and if i should do more in the comments below and as always thank you guys for watching the video